The album begins in 1850, in the reign of Queen Victoria. No traffic jams, no parking problems. Only the sound of smart carriages and tradesmen vans to disturb a city going about its business. Newly opened museums were the places to take the children. And in Hyde Park, the Great Exhibition drew its daily crowds. If you could afford it, finding a house was no problem in those days. Richard Blake, a young publisher, even had one given to him for a wedding present. My love, your father's wedding gift was most generous. It is a fine house. But I must confess, I do not like these chairs. Mama sent them for us, especially from the country. And they are really most graceful in design. Spindly things, I call them. Now, the other day, I saw some really solid and striking-looking chairs made out of papier-mâché. Fancy now. That's the very latest. Well, well, these days there are some wonderful ideas for a fellow who wants to furnish his home in the modern way. We will illuminate this room by gas. Oh, no, Richard. No, my love? I mean, let us not forget the handsome candelabra Mama has given us. They are indeed very handsome. Candlelight is so much more becoming to ladies. The servants will have candles, we will have gas. Come, Laura, let us now go to the kitchen. Yes, Richard. Now, this, of course, is really my wife's province. I assume, sir, that madam will wish to replace this kitchen range with a modern gas stove. Oh, Richard, do let us. I am told they are really a quite wonderful invention. They are indeed, madam. You will find it will save the servants much trouble. I have no wish to inculcate laziness in my servants, least of all at the expense of my own pocket. We will retain the curl range. But, Richard... Laura, my dear, please. Yes, Richard. We shall be moving in next month. It was springtime, well over a hundred years ago. There was a lot to move in and much to be done. The Blakes were furnishing the whole house from top to bottom. The master's word was law, so up to the attic went the heifer white chairs and the settee. And in came the new, modern, solid furniture in their place. Up in the attic, the old furniture joined the relics of the past. But downstairs, everything was new, modern, and up to date. Their first child was called Eva. Good night, little Eva. Richard extended his modern ideas into the nursery, too. The 1850s were the early days of photography. And Richard was a keen amateur. Now, look this way. Now, that's perfect. Now, don't move, anyone. And now, watch the dicky bird. Dicky Bird. Well done, Laura. Fourteen children in twenty years. And by the time Louisa was born, that's the baby on her mother's lap. It was 1874. Their first Eva was 23 and still unmarried, and their second, William, was just 21. To celebrate the occasion, William's parents gave an evening party, and this meant turmoil below stairs. Apple! Apple! No use calling her a cook, she's ironing. The next time Madam tells me she's given an evening party, I've packed up my bags and leaves. Well, with six daughters to marry off, there's bound to be some more. All them cooked meats to prepare on a stove what came out of the ark? It's all right for them. Why don't they get a gas one? They're no trouble to no one. Why should they, when they've got us to fetch and carry the coal? If there was no coal to fetch and carry, you'd be out of a job. Oh, and I'd be without a backache, too. 
The master is asking for his bath. The water shall be sent up at once, madam. Pray see that it is. Yeah, yes, madam. Of course, madam. Take those saucepans off the stove. We must heat the master's bath water. Put some towels to warm. Go on, go on. Oh. Fetch the buckets. Go on, hurry, hurry. Oh. The towels, the buckets. Come on. I'm hurrying. I'm going as fast as I can. All them baths ain't healthy. Get out of my kitchen. Oh, out the way, girl. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not ready. Let's see. Quick there. I'm getting my notice. A month that's legal. <laughs> Eva looks pale. In love? Alas, no. Eva was too independent for anything like that. William, too, took his party seriously, for he was about to start his first job at the Blake and Sons family business. And seven years later, William took over the family business from his father. He also took over the new lady typewriter. Her name was Emily a young lady of refinement and good education, who was obliged through misfortune to earn her own living. A year later, they were married. On April the 4th, 1882. Isn't she lovely, Mother? Beautiful. My dear Mrs. Strange. Lola. I would so like you to see the wedding presents the children have had. They have been most lucky. This is wonderful. And here, the most lovely pair of vases I must show you. My dear Laura, what an extraordinary idea. Whoever gave them a gas stove? Richard. They are greatly improved lately, you know. Most useful for a young couple. Most useful for people who have no servants, I have no doubt, but... My, my new daughter-in-law brings no dowry. What money Richard and I have must be shared among 14 children. I'm afraid the poor dears will have to economize a little. Yes, the young Blakes had to economize at first, but they'd always been a progressive family. And William's brother Archibald, being a bachelor, did not feel unduly extravagant when he invested in one of the new vehicles, so aptly referred to as horseless carriages. But he decided it was too slow a form of transport, and he became a bruised pioneer of the chain bicycle. It took a real enthusiast to fall off one of those things. Yes, they all lived in an inventive age, a time during which there were many developments leading to more efficient methods of lighting and heating and other marvelous devices. Dress that thing. Jenkins! Jenkins! Oh, dear. May I answer the telephone, Mama? Mama? If you might get a terrible shock, you might be killed. Let Jenkins do it. Uh, are you there? Oh, you are? Uh, uh, who are you? Oh, uh, very good, sir. The, the master, man. Are you there? Is that you, Emily? Yes. Can you hear me, William? Quite clearly. Can you hear me? What did you say? I said, can you hear me? Hello? Are you there? Are you there, William? Hello? Emily? This is Emily speaking. Oh, I thought you had gone. Emily, my dear, there is a demonstration this evening of the new moving picture. Would you care to come? It's Cook's night out. Well, can't she go out another night? Well, I gather she's arranged to go to a music hall with one of her followers. Oh, that policeman fellow? No, 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 the gas man. Oh. Well, we'll dine out at the Monaco. I'll call for you in the carriage on my way back from the office. I'll see you presently, my dear. Goodbye, William. <laughs> It's based on an optical illusion, but there's no future to it. It's just a novelty. 
But the next year, in 1896, it was still a novelty. And still the year after, the year of Queen Victoria's Jubilee. Each year, the novelty became more popular. Ladies' fashions were forever changing, but the kinematograph had come to stay. 1898 saw the Gordon Highlanders marching off to the Boer War. Nineteen hundred and one, the funeral of Queen Victoria. A sad beginning to the twentieth century. I still don't see why the twentieth century didn't begin last year in nineteen hundred. Because there was never a year naught, my dear. <laughs> A century starts with the year one. In 1902, King Edward VII opened his first parliament. The Prince of Wales, who later became King George V, inaugurates the Westminster to Tooting tram service. With him are his two sons, who later became King Edward VIII and King George VI. It is now 1903. William is not as young as he used to be. He is thinking of retiring and handing over the business to his eldest son, Philip. That's Philip, next to Archibald. And that's the youngest son, Albert, to whom Philip has just passed the port. Albert later became a junior partner in the business. I, uh, I hope the men won't rush their port and cigars. Then we can have a nice little talk. There'll probably be hours. They'll sit and talk about horseless carriages. Horseless carriage? We can't go on calling them that. It's clumsy and old-fashioned. I rather like uh, self-propellers. I think auto carriage sounds rather good. Good servants are difficult to come by because the lower classes prefer to work in factories. You can hardly blame them. They get better wages and more freedom. Oh, but it's rather hard on us. In France, they're called automobiles, and the drivers are called chauffeurs. Chauffeurs? But that means stokers. Yes, that's right. There's no doubt about it. Women nowadays have a much greater sense of social responsibility than men. Men are frivolous creatures. They always have been. I grant you he's a good tailor, but I wouldn't say he was the best man in London for Westcott. Women must be granted equal rights with men. Exactly. Vote for women! Why don't you give women the vote? Vote for women! Was it very terrible in prison, Aunt Eva? My dear, the conditions in Holloway, a disgrace. Which floor were you on, Eva? The third. I was lucky. I was on the second. I hate stairs. Ethel Brampton's just been in again. What for? Throwing bricks through Harrod's shop window. How is it progressing, Vicky? Oh, it's nearly finished. Oh, good afternoon, Albert. Hello, Aunt Eva. Good afternoon, ladies. Hello, darling. How are you, Mother? Oh, it was hot in the city today. Any news, dear? Oh, nothing much. Some Archduke or other's been assassinated at a place called Sarajevo. Nothing of importance. But it was something of importance. That incident was to cast the lives of millions of young men all over Europe. Peace came after four long, weary years of fighting. Another 24 hours and we'll be civilians. Back to the old life, eh? Peace and plenty. Back to the old life. But the old life had changed. People weren't as comfortably off. Money didn't go as far. Big houses were expensive to run and servants difficult to get. Albert now had the expense of educating two children. So he decided to let off part of the family house as flats. Even the attic, full of memories, was to be turned into living rooms. 
But, Albert, there's nothing here but junk. Don't you believe it, darling. I used to play up here as a kid. I know what's here. There's beautiful old stuff. We may even be able to furnish the flat. I say, I think these chairs are heaven white. Look at me, Edward. Vicky, come and lend me a hand, dear. So yesterday's junk became today's antique, and the 18th century furniture came into its own once more. I still don't think I'm going to like being a flat dweller in our own house. You never had to organize the cleaning of it. There were other changes, too, with the new way of living. By installing gas appliances, the conversion of fine old houses into flats was comparatively simple. Yes, the Blakes kept pace with the times. This is 2LO. 2LO, the London station of the British Broadcasting Company calling. Here is the news, copyright by Reuters, Press Association, Exchange Telegraph and Central News. Today, His Majesty the King opened the British Empire exhibition at Wembley. Madame Tussaud's wax museum is still on fire. The firemen are vainly trying to fight the flame. Fashion news from Paris is that for 1927, the waist is to be lower than ever. The highest tide on record caused serious floods and some casualties in London last night. The commemorative statue of Mrs. Pankhurst, pioneer of the Votes for Women campaign, was unveiled today by Mr. Baldwin in the Victoria Tower Garden, Westminster. Yes, the woman's battle was won, and at last they were entitled to vote. But Vicky still had her own problems, Albert's dinner to cook, and the washing to think about. However, the young Blake's enterprising as ever, had adopted many labor-saving devices. For instance, a much improved type of geezer in the bathroom. And at the sink, a gas water heater that gave Vicky instant hot water at the turn of the tap. The gas cooker and the water heaters were enameled, so they were easier for Vicky to clean. And that great boon to the housewife had been introduced, the automatic heat control for the oven. Vicky? Yes? I thought want to send young Edward for his birthday. What? Portable wireless. The portable was much appreciated at school. And also was useful at Oxford. At five o'clock this morning, German troops marched into Poland. Yes, yes. Another few days and we'll be a civilian. Whack, yeah. Got a job to go. Oh, family business. Publishing. Blake and Sons. So this is where all the work's done, eh? That's it. You're the big boss, are you? Well, not exactly. I thought your family owned all this. Well, it's a bit spread out nowadays, you see, but uh, it's a job. Yes. Well, what about you? Married yet? Well, I've had my briefing. Oh, fine. <laughs> the operation's postponed until we can find somewhere to live. Mm -hmm. And you? Got a flat? No. Furnished rooms. Uh -huh. But now my mother and father have decided to move to the seaside. So we're going to take over their flat. And so a new family of Blakes, Betty, Edward, and their little daughter, Jenny, moved into the old house. Where do you want it, Governor? Television. On approval, I hope. No, nope, firm order. You're a bit extravagant, aren't you? Uh, put it over there, will you? No, 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 over there. Betty. Oh, Edward, please don't interfere. Yes, darling. I think trying to help. Things. Oh, yes, yes, I ordered them. That's a gas drying cabinet, and that's a washing machine. On approval, I hope. Oh, no, no, firm order. Well, that's the first I've heard of it. Well, you didn't consult me before you ordered the television set, did you? Oh, that's different. What's different about it? 
Well, my mother managed to run this flat without having all these things in the kitchen. Yes, and your father managed to exist without the television set. Oh, yes, but listen, Betty, darling. Edward, I wonder if you have any idea just how hard it is to run a flat these days single-handed, especially with a child. Yes, I know all that. I wonder if you do know all that. Anyway, the work has to be done. But who's going to pay? You are, darling. And they cost very little compared with the television. And they do something the television doesn't do. They pay for themselves. Do they? I've gone into it all very carefully, and I've made sure that they do. In 1951, Jenny Blake was nine years old, a child of the television age. This was the year when the whole country displayed its best finery at the Festival of Britain, opened by King George VI. A year later, people from all over Britain paid a last tribute to their beloved king. In 1952, Oxford just won the boat race by a canvas. At Wembley, the FA Cup went to Newcastle United for the second year running. And on Epsom Downs, crowds turned up in their usual thousands to see Talia win in a close finish. Earlier that year, identity cards were abolished. And the prefabs started to give way to new modern dwellings. Foodstuffs were gradually becoming more plentiful. Ration books were no longer so important in our daily lives. And on the 5th of July, London's last tramcar made its final melancholy journey home. In 1953 came a piece of news that affected Jenny herself. Sweet rationing was ended. But the main event of the year was, of course, the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Elizabeth, the crowned Queen of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. In 1961, Jenny was 18, with all the teenage enthusiasm for life in a high-speed world. Today's launching by Russia of the first manned multi-stage rocket marks a new step forward in the conquest of space. This remarkable achievement was unexpectedly announced by the USSR after Major Yuri Gagarin had taken his place in history as the first man to venture beyond the Earth. And it brings nearer the day when man's first journey to the moon becomes a reality. But who on Earth wants to go to the moon anyway? I do. Jenny was growing up fast and already had dreams for the future. And in 1965, three years later, she started a career of her own. It's going, going to be late, you know, Mother. My flight takes off at 8.30. An important factor in the technological revolution now taking place in the British gas industry is the recent breakthrough in the sea transportation of natural gas. The gas is liquefied by refrigeration at the Algerian port of Arzou for transportation in specially designed methane tankers to Canary Island. Here, the liquid methane is changed back into gas to be pumped out into the new methane pipeline to make an important contribution to Britain's increasing demand for gas. Ah, there's your father. Have I missed the finals of the Miss World contest? <laughs> oh, really, Daddy? Can't you think of anything more important than a lot of girls parading in bathing costumes? Well, no, not really. Well, you had missed it anyway. Mm, what a pity. Alex late again. He knows I hate having to rush. You shouldn't grumble, darling. It's very kind of him to take you to the airport. He's such a nice boy. And your father says he's getting on very well at the office. I don't know why you don't want to marry him. Oh, Mummy, marriage isn't for me. I want to be free and get some excitement out of life. Oh, that'll be him now. Yeah, I'll go. And not a word about marriage, Mummy. He doesn't need any encouragement. Oh, mind you, don't lose him to some pretty secretary at the office. <laughs> what a Blake and Sons. Hello, come in, Alex. Thank you, Mr. Blake. Hello, Jenny. Good evening, Mrs. Blake. Hello, Alex. How's your mother? Oh, she's fine, thanks. I've been telling her about the bungalow you're building. How's it coming along, sir? Oh, Alex, oh. we haven't got time to stay and chat about bungalows. Come along. Oh, all right. You'll be sorry to leave this place, won't you? Well, yes, we shall. 
It's been in the family well over a hundred years now. Still living in the town's getting pretty hectic Goodbye now. Goodbye, all. Right. I'll go by taxi. What? Hey, just a minute. I'm coming. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Mrs. Blake. I... Edward and Betty had agreed on their ideal bungalow. Everything was to be built just as they wanted it. Brick by brick, it was rising up, as planned. Jenny, too, was frequently rising up, getting out of life all the excitement she had so much set her heart on. Alec Thompson was also rising up in the Blake's family business. And then, at last, Edward and Betty's bungalow was ready for occupation. I thought we might have curtains like these in the spare room. Perhaps Venetian blinds in the kitchen. Can't quite make up my mind about our bedroom. What do you think? You haven't been listening. Oh, I'm sorry, Mummy. It's just that Alex here to talk to Daddy about something rather special. Oh, no, Alex. I'm afraid I can't agree. But surely, sir, it would be possible if... No, 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 this way. You see, it must be this way because the gas um, warms up the air in here, see? Uh, and then, and then it's blown to all the rooms from one of these outlets. Oh, I'm so glad. Tell me more about it. Well, that is what I was going to ask you if Jenny and I... Well, you know what I'm earning at the office and... Oh, Edward, isn't it wonderful? That they're going to be married. Oh. Well, why didn't you tell me? Marvellous. I'm sorry, sir. I kept putting off asking you and then... Oh, that's all right. You're much better at it than I was. Well, I only hope that you'll be as happy as we are. Well, we're going to start house hunting right away, aren't we, Alex? Yes, I'm afraid that's going to be our first problem. Well, why don't you take over a flat in our old house? You know we're having it modernised. Well, it's very good of you, but I'm afraid we couldn't afford it. As a matter of fact, we sort of guessed that you might be up to something like this. And so we wondered whether you wouldn't like to have our flat. You know, as a wedding present. Daddy! So Jenny and Alec got married, and Jenny's early ambitions about being a career girl somehow seemed to fade away. And when this fifth Blake generation moved into the old house, it was into a very different setting to those that had gone before. Edward and Betty found many surprises when they visited their old flat. So you see, you just set the automatic time control and the gas in the oven will light up all by itself at the time you want it to. So you can be married and have your freedom too. Fine. Yes, it's fine. You know, it was Alex's idea to buy this. If he's half as bright in the office as he is at home, I don't know why Daddy doesn't promote him to manager. All the good ideas here have been Alex. But I must confess, sir, all the good ideas have been Jenny's. Ah, by the way, talking of ideas. Now, we've been considering your position in the company, and I'm glad to tell you that... Well, Daddy, what do you think of it? Oh, I think you've done wonders. Don't you, Betty? I do indeed. Ah! Nice, aren't they? We found them in that box of old junk you left us when you moved out. This old junk, as you call it, once belonged to your great-great-grandparents when they first came to live in this house well over a hundred years ago. I wonder what they'd say about this old place if they could see it today. I'm sure they'd approve. Oh, yes. The Blakes have always moved with the times. Yes. When their wives pushed them hard enough. And the future. Who knows? From the outside, the house still looks the same. But there will be changes as time goes on, and our story will go on. For it is a story which has no end.